Commander John Harrow sat in the dim light of his office aboard the Starship Sentinel, analyzing streams of data from deep space probes that skirted the edge of known space. The routine was familiar, a necessary monotony punctuated by the hum of the ship and the distant echoes of the crew at work. It was during one of these routine checks that an encrypted message flashed across his screen, an anomaly that seized his immediate attention. The message was sparse, consisting of coordinates and a cryptic hint about the legendary Lost Fleet, a collection of Earth's ancient ships that vanished without a trace during humanity's first aggressive wave of space colonization. The legend of the Lost Fleet was well known. It was said to contain ships equipped with technologies far advanced for their time, technologies that had since been lost to the annals of history. Harrow rubbed his chin thoughtfully as he considered the implications, if the message was accurate, this could be a monumental discovery. The possibility of reclaiming such technologies was too significant to ignore. He summoned his senior officers to the briefing room to discuss the message's authenticity and the potential expedition. Are we sure this isn't a wild goose chase? Questioned Lieutenant Commander Smith, the ship's executive officer, as the senior staff assembled around the holographic map displaying the coordinates. Smith was known for his skepticism, a trait that had served the ship well in the past. The source of the transmission is unknown, and yes, it could very well be a decoy or misinformation, Harrow acknowledged, his voice steady, reflecting neither undue excitement nor dismissive skepticism. Lieutenant Carter, the chief navigator, interjected, The coordinates lead to a sector notorious for its gravitational anomalies. Not many would venture there lightly. It doesn't seem like a standard trap. Harrow nodded in agreement. Exactly, Carter. This might be the real deal. And think of the technological advances we could regain. The strategic advantage alone. But sir, the risks? Another officer chimed in, voicing the collective concern of venturing into uncharted and potentially dangerous space. Harrow stood, his posture firm as he addressed his crew. Every great discovery entails risk. The potential benefits here outweigh the dangers. We have a chance to recover a part of human history and possibly secure technology that could shift the balance of power in known space. The room fell silent as the officers considered Harrow's words. Finally, Smith spoke. If we're doing this, we need to be fully prepared for whatever we might find. Anomalies, hostile forces, you name it. Agreed, Harrow said. Prepare the ship for a long-range mission. I want all departments on high alert and double checks on all systems. Carter, plot a course that will keep us at a safe distance from the known gravitational fields until we need to approach the sector directly. Yes, sir, Carter replied, his tone now infused with the excitement of the upcoming mission. The room buzzed with renewed energy as the officers began to coordinate their respective departments. As the meeting disbanded, Harrow stayed back, looking at the blinking coordinates on the map. This mission could be a wild chase into the void, a fruitless search through the remnants of history. Or it could be the kind of discovery that comes once in a lifetime, the kind that changes everything. With a deep breath, he solidified his resolve. This was the path they would take. For better or worse, the Sentinel would seek out the lost fleet, driven by the hope of what might be found in the vast, uncharted reaches of space. The Starship Sentinel embarked on its journey cutting through the darkness of space towards the coordinates that promised the discovery of the lost fleet. Commander John Harrow monitored the ship's progress from the bridge, aware of the weight of expectation that rested on the success of this mission. Lieutenant Carter was at the helm, navigating through star systems that gradually became less familiar, moving towards the unknown. As the Sentinel approached the outer edges of charted space, the risks became more tangible. The region was notorious for gravitational anomalies and unpredictable space debris that could jeopardize even the most fortified starships. Carter's fingers danced across the navigation console, adjusting the ship's trajectory to avoid these hazards. Gravitational field up ahead adjusting course by 0.3 degrees, Carter announced, his voice calm yet focused. The ship veered slightly, the adjustment barely perceptible but crucial. Harrow nodded appreciating Carter's expertise. Keep us on the safest path, Carter. No unnecessary risks. 
Despite the careful navigation, the mission was not without its detractors within the crew. During a routine check in the engine room, Harrow overheard a conversation between two engineers. We're chasing ghosts, one muttered, skepticism heavy in his tone. What if there's nothing out there? Harrow intervened, his presence commanding attention. We're not chasing ghosts. We're following a lead that could significantly advance our understanding of early space technology. Keep focused on your duties. It's essential that everyone on this ship believes in our mission. The skepticism wasn't limited to the lower ranks. In the privacy of his office, Lieutenant Commander Smith voiced his concerns more directly. John, we need to consider the possibility of a dead end. What then? We ventured deep into uncharted territory. Harrow understood the risks, but his resolve was firm. I'm aware of the stakes, Smith, but imagine what it means if we succeed. We could be on the edge of a significant breakthrough for humanity. We owe it to ourselves and future generations to pursue this. The journey continued, days turning into weeks. Life aboard the Sentinel settled into a rhythm dictated by the routines of space travel. Shift changes, system checks, and continuous monitoring of their surroundings. The farther they traveled, the more the crew relied on the ship's advanced systems and each other. On one particularly tense day, the ship's alarm blared suddenly, signaling a proximity alert. The crew sprang into action, with Harrow rushing to the bridge. Report, he demanded, arriving at Carter's side. We've picked up a large object in our path, possibly a derelict spacecraft, Carter replied, his eyes scanning the data on his screens. Can we identify it? Harrow asked, peering at the readings over Carter's shoulder. It's non-operational, but it's massive. Could be an old colonial ship, Carter explained, adjusting the sensors to get a better read. Let's take a detour. Mark this location. It might be worth investigating on our return journey, Harrow decided, not wanting to divert from their primary mission. As the ship maneuvered around the obstacle, the incident served as a stark reminder of the dangers they faced in this remote part of the galaxy. It also strengthened the crew's resolve, reinforcing the reality that they were now far from the safety of known space, reliant on their skills and the capabilities of their vessel. Throughout the journey, Harrow made it a point to communicate openly with his crew, addressing concerns during briefings and ensuring that morale remained high. We are explorers at the frontier of human achievement, he often reminded them, bolstering their spirits. As the Sentinel drew closer to the coordinates, the anticipation aboard the ship grew. Every member of the crew felt the looming presence of the unknown. Would they find the lost fleet as promised, or was this journey a leap into folly? Only the final leg of their voyage would reveal the truth. As the Sentinel entered the coordinates, a slow swell of anticipation spread through the crew. The space ahead, sprinkled with the glitter of distant stars, opened up to reveal the silhouettes of ships, majestic even in their dormancy. The lost fleet, as it was aptly named, orbited a dormant star, their hulls reflecting the dim light and creating an eerie spectacle. Commander John Harrow stood at the forefront of the bridge, eyes fixed on the viewscreens, the sight of the lost fleet, a historical puzzle piece of humanity's first endeavors into deep space, was overwhelming. He turned to Lieutenant Carter, who had been instrumental in navigating them through the perilous journey. Initiate a detailed scan of the fleet. I want every piece of data we can gather before we set foot on any of those ships, Harrow instructed, his voice carrying a mix of command and reverence for the monumental discovery. Carter nodded, his fingers swiftly moving across the control panel. Scanning now, Commander. The structures are stable, but there's minimal power reading. It looks like they've been in hibernation mode for centuries. With the preliminary scans offering reassurance, Harrow decided to lead an away team to board the flagship. The decision wasn't made lightly. The risk of potential traps or failing life support systems weighed on him. However, the opportunity to uncover technologies and information lost to time was too significant to pass up. Prepare for boarding. I'm taking point with a selected team. Carter, you're in charge while I'm over there, Harrow said, turning to address his deputy. Understood, Commander. We'll keep a continuous scan for any anomalies while you're aboard the flagship, Carter replied, the responsibility clear in his tone. 
Equipped with their spacesuits, Harrow and his team embarked on a shuttle from the Sentinel, maneuvering towards the flagship. The silence of space enveloped them as they docked, the magnetic locks hissing softly as they engaged. The airlock door opened with a faint groan, a testament to its age and disuse. Stepping onto the flagship, Harrow felt a chill that wasn't from the cold of the space-borne vessel. They were walking through a piece of history, a vessel that had served humanity before being swallowed by the void of space. The corridors were shrouded in darkness, the only light coming from their suit lamps. This is incredible, murmured Sergeant Reynolds, a member of the away team, as they passed through the main corridor lined with dormant consoles and dust-covered seats. Keep your focus, Reynolds. We're not here to marvel. We're here to bring back whatever can help us, Harrow reminded gently, leading the team towards the ship's control center. Upon reaching the control center, the team worked to access the mainframe. Initial attempts to interface with their equipment met with compatibility issues, a stark reminder of the technological gap between their time and the era of the lost fleet. Let me try this old override code, suggested technician Lee, an expert in historical ship systems who had studied the theoretical frameworks of early spacefaring vessels. After several tense minutes, the consoles flickered to life, bathing the room in a soft blue light. Systems coming online, Commander. We should have access to the ship's logs and operational data soon, Lee reported, relief evident in his voice. Harrow nodded, watching as data streamed across the screens. Good work, Lee. Let's gather as much as we can and prepare to bring it back to the Sentinel. There's much to learn here. As they downloaded the data, Harrow couldn't help but feel a deep connection to the pioneers who had first sailed these ships into the unknown. This was more than a recovery mission. It was a bridge to their past, a link to the daring spirits of those who had expanded the boundaries of human reach. With their objectives met, the team prepared to return to the Sentinel. The successful initial exploration brought not only relief, but a renewed sense of purpose. The lost fleet was no longer a legend. It was real, and it was theirs to reclaim. As the Sentinel's team busied themselves with the data recovery from the flagship of the lost fleet, Commander John Harrow noticed a sudden shift in the mood among the bridge crew. The quiet efficiency was replaced by a tense alertness. Lieutenant Carter approached Harrow with a grave expression. Commander, we've picked up incoming signals. Multiple spacecraft are converging on our position, Carter reported, his voice steady despite the concerning news. Identify them, Harrow commanded, moving swiftly to join Carter at the navigation console. The sensors flickered as they honed in on the approaching objects, resolving their blurry outlines into recognizable spacecraft. They're Voren ships, Commander, and they're armed, Carter added zooming in on the tactical display which now showed the sleek, menacing profiles of the Voren Armada. Open a channel, Harrow decided, his tone authoritative yet calm, masking the concern that began to gnaw at him. Within moments, the communication line buzzed to life, and the visage of a Voren commander appeared on their screen. I am Commander Thalos of the Voren Sovereignty. You are trespassing in Voren space with unauthorized activation of ancient technology. Stand down and prepare to vacate the area, the alien commander demanded, his voice resonating with a cold, metallic timber. Harrow straightened, meeting Thalos's gaze through the screen. Commander Thalos, we are on a peaceful mission of exploration. We've stumbled upon these vessels which, according to our records, belong to humanity's ancestral fleet. We intend no incursion into Voren space, Harrow replied, striving to infuse diplomacy into the tense exchange. Your intentions matter little. The reactivation of these ships poses a direct threat to Voren's sovereignty. You have one hour to comply with our demands or we will take necessary action. Thalos responded curtly before cutting the communication. The threat hung heavily in the air. Harrow turned to face his crew, seeing the mix of resolve and apprehension in their eyes. Prepare for a potential hostile engagement. Carter, continue trying to establish diplomatic communications. Everyone else. Let's get those ships operational. We may need them if talks fail. As Carter worked feverishly to reestablish contact with the Voren commander, Harrow coordinated with the engineering teams aboard the flagship. Lee, what's the status of the weapon systems on the fleet? 
We've got partial control over some of the Dreadnought systems, Commander. Given more time, we might get more operational, Technician Lee reported from the flagship. Time is a luxury we don't have. Make do with what you've got. I need those weapons online, Harrow replied, his voice a blend of urgency and command. Back on the Sentinel, the crew braced for the worst. Carter returned to Harrow with an update, his expression grim. No response from their commander, sir. It looks like they're preparing to engage. Understood, Harrow acknowledged, taking a moment to survey the young faces around him. Listen up, everyone. We didn't come this far to back down now. We're going to defend ourselves if necessary, but our primary goal remains to avoid conflict. Keep working on getting those systems up and operational. The tension escalated as the Voren fleet maneuvered into an attack formation. Harrow could see the sleek enemy ships aligning their weaponry with the Sentinel and its newfound fleet. The standoff was palpable, with each passing second stretching into eternity as they awaited the Voren's next move. Commander, we have partial weapons capability on two of the dreadnoughts. Defensive systems are at minimal functionality, but it should be enough to protect us for some time. Lee's voice crackled over the comms. Good work, Lee. Everyone hold positions and stand by for my command, Harrow ordered, his gaze locked on the tactical display, watching as the Voren ships edged closer. The future of their mission hung in the balance, dependent on the next few minutes. Would it be their diplomatic efforts, or the newly awakened might of the ancient fleet that would save them? Harrow hoped for the former, but prepared for the latter, ready to defend the legacy of humanity's reach into the stars. The standoff between the Sentinel and the Voren Armada intensified, each moment thick with the threat of escalation. Commander John Harrow knew that his window to prevent conflict was narrowing rapidly. He convened a strategic meeting with his senior officers to finalize their defense plan. Status on all operational systems of the Dreadnoughts, Harrow commanded, as he stepped into the room where his officers were assembled around a holographic display of the fleet and approaching Voren ships. Technician Lee, who had been coordinating with the engineering teams aboard the reactivated Dreadnoughts, provided an update. We've managed to bring online the primary weapon systems of the first two dreadnoughts. Shields are at minimal power, but they should hold under a first strike. Minimal isn't ideal, Lee. Keep pushing for more power to those shields. I want every bit of defense we can muster, Harrow responded, his focus sharp. Turning to Lieutenant Carter, Harrow asked, What's our tactical layout, Carter? How are we positioning the fleet? Carter pointed to the display where the icons of their ships were positioned in a defensive formation. We've arranged the dreadnoughts in a protective stance around the Sentinel. Their firepower should dissuade the Vorans from advancing further. We can rotate them to spread shield coverage as needed. Harrow nodded, satisfied with the setup. Good. Keep communications open with the Voren fleet. Let them know we're prepared to defend but not looking to escalate. Maybe they'll reconsider before starting a war. As the crew executed their orders, Harrow communicated over the shipwide intercom, ensuring everyone was aware of the situation and the importance of their roles. All hands, this is Commander Harrow. We're in a standoff with the Voren fleet. I trust each of you to perform your duties with the precision and urgency they require. Stay alert and follow your officer's commands. Meanwhile, on the bridge, Carter maintained a steady dialogue with the Voren fleet repeatedly sending messages of peace and negotiation, though the responses remained aggressively noncommittal. Suddenly, an alert sounded. The Vorans were making a move, not yet an attack, but positioning their ships for a potential strike. Harrow quickly ordered, Activate all defensive measures. Prepare to return fire but hold until my command. The bridge crew tensed, their eyes on their screens, fingers ready at their stations. In the tactical operations center, Officers coordinated the network of sensors and weapon systems, ensuring that any hostile action would not go unanswered. Commander, Voren ships are charging weapons, reported an officer from the tactical station. Hold fire. Let's not escalate this unless absolutely necessary, Harrow replied, his voice a calm command amidst rising tension. Back in the engineering section of the flagship, Lee and his team worked frantically to bolster the power to the shields. We've got a bit more juice to the shields now, Commander, 
It's still not at full capacity, but it should give us a better chance, Lee's voice crackled over the comms. Every little bit helps, Lee. Keep at it, Harrow encouraged, knowing the survival of his crew might depend on those shields. On the bridge, Harrow stood resolute, watching the standoff unfold. The Voren commander appeared on the screen once more, his tone harsh and uncompromising. This is your final warning, human commander. Stand down and withdraw, or we will fire. Harrow faced the screen, his posture unyielding. We are here on a mission of exploration, not conquest. Any aggressive action from your side will be met with equal force. We do not wish to engage in battle, but make no mistake, we will defend ourselves. The tension reached a palpable height as both fleets stood on the brink of confrontation. Harrow's crew was ready, each member aware that the next few moments could lead to peace or plunge them into a violent conflict. The tense standoff in the depths of space reached its breaking point when a squadron of Voren scout ships, sleek and aggressive, broke from the main formation and charged towards the Sentinel and its flanking dreadnoughts. Commander John Harrow watched the tactical display closely, gauging the speed and formation of the incoming ships. Scouts approaching fast, Commander. Weapons are hot, reported Lieutenant Carter, his voice steady as he coordinated the fleet's defensive response. Signal all ships. Defensive formation Delta. Prepare to engage on my mark, Harrow instructed, his gaze fixed on the screen, watching as the dots representing the Voren scouts moved into attack range. The crew of the Sentinel worked with precision, their training kicking in seamlessly. The Dreadnoughts, ancient yet formidable with their newly activated weapon systems, pivoted to create a protective barrier around the Sentinel. The defensive strategy was designed to maximize the coverage of their limited shield capacity while presenting a unified front against the attackers. As the Vorin ships closed in, the first volleys of plasma fire streaked across space, illuminating the void with their deadly glow. The Sentinel's shields flared under the impact, absorbing the energy with a low hum that resonated through the hull. Shields holding at 75%, but we can't take a sustained barrage, Carter updated, his hands moving quickly over his console to adjust the power distribution. Target the lead scout. Fire a warning shot across their bow. Let's see if they're really committed to this fight, Harrow commanded hoping to de-escalate the situation without significant conflict. The Sentinel's main gun charged, a deep thrumming sound filling the air, before releasing a concentrated burst of energy that shot past the nose of the leading Voren scout. The maneuver was precise, missing the alien ship by mere meters. For a moment, the Voren scouts hesitated, their formation faltering as they assessed the humans' resolve and capabilities. Harrow watched, a part of him hoping for a tactical withdrawal. Commander, the Voren commander is hailing us, Carter said, breaking the brief silence that had fallen over the bridge. On screen, Harrow responded, straightening up as the image of the Voren commander, Thalos, appeared once again. This is your last warning, human. Withdraw now or we will destroy you, Thalos threatened, his face a mask of alien stoicism. We will defend ourselves, Thalos. I urge you to reconsider your position. Harrow replied, maintaining a firm yet diplomatic tone. Thalos sneered, cutting the communication abruptly, his decision clear. Almost immediately, the Voren scouts resumed their advance, this time with increased aggression, unleashing a barrage of fire aimed directly at the Sentinel and its protective dreadnoughts. Return fire! Target their engines! Disable if possible! Harrow ordered, his voice echoing commandingly through the bridge. The Sentinel and the two dreadnoughts obeyed, their guns lighting up the space with return fire. The first hits were critical. One of the Voren scouts spun out of control, its engines damaged, while another suffered severe damage to its weapon systems, rendering it nearly combat ineffective. The brief skirmish escalated quickly but ended just as swiftly. The Voren scouts, realizing the might of the ancient dreadnoughts and their own compromised position, began to retreat dragging their damaged comrades in their wake. Harrow let out a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding, his gaze shifting from the tactical display to his crew, who were monitoring the retreat of the Voren ships. Assess the damage and start repairs immediately. Carter, keep an eye on them until they're well out of our range, Harrow ordered, his mind already turning to the next steps they needed to take. 
The crew murmured affirmations, relieved at the outcome, but aware of the tension that still hung heavily around them. This skirmish was a clear demonstration of the Sentinels' capabilities and the strategic importance of the lost fleet, but it also marked the beginning of what could be a more significant conflict with the Voran sovereignty. Following the skirmish with the Voran scouts, the crew of the Sentinel busied themselves with repairs and system checks, ensuring they were prepared for any further hostilities. However, the aftermath of the confrontation brought an unexpected development. Lieutenant Carter approached Commander John Harrow with a new communication from a different faction within the Voran civilization. Commander, we've received a transmission from a group identifying themselves as part of a Voran rebel faction. They're requesting a meeting, Carter reported his tone reflecting the delicacy of the situation. Harrow raised his eyebrows, intrigued by the turn of events. Rebels, you say? What's their stance? They claim to be opposed to their government's aggressive policies and are seeking our assistance in their rebellion, Carter explained, handing Harrow a tablet with the encrypted message displayed. Set up a secure line. I want to talk to their leader before we make any moves, Harrow decided his strategic mind already weighing the potential benefits and risks of such an alliance. Within the hour, a secure communication channel was established, and the face of the Voren rebel leader Soren appeared on the screen in the commander's office. Soren's expression was earnest, his voice tinged with urgency. Commander Harrow, I am Soren, leader of the Voren Freedom Movement. We seek to end the tyranny of our current rulers and believe that your presence here could be the catalyst we need, Soren began, his gaze steady. Harrow listened intently, interjecting to ask, Why come to us? This is your internal matter. What makes you think we can or should intervene? Soren nodded, acknowledging the question's validity. We've observed your engagement with our scouts, your technology and tactics suggest you possess capabilities we lack. We do not ask for direct military intervention, but rather strategic support and the sharing of knowledge. And what do you offer in return? Harrow inquired, not yet committed but curious about the possible advantages. Intelligence on Voran movements and technologies, and most importantly, a formal alliance. With your help, we can reshape our government and build a lasting peace between our peoples, Soren proposed. Harrow considered the offer. An alliance with the rebels could indeed provide strategic depth and valuable allies in this sector. However, the ethics of supporting a rebellion needed careful consideration. He requested a brief recess to confer with his senior staff. In the meeting with his officers, Harrow laid out the rebels' proposal. This could be a chance to stabilize the region and gain a foothold here, but it also means taking sides in their civil conflict, he stated, opening the floor to discussion. Lieutenant Commander Smith, always cautious, voiced his concern. It's a risky move, Commander. We don't fully understand their politics or the long-term consequences of our involvement. Carter, ever the tactician, added, Strategically, it could be advantageous. The intelligence they offer could give us an edge, not just here, but in broader galactic relations. After a robust discussion, Harrow made his decision. We proceed cautiously. I'll go back to Soren with our conditions. We help them, but strictly in a support role. No Sentinel troops will be involved in combat operations. Returning to the communication channel, Harrow outlined his terms to Soren, who agreed eagerly, grateful for any assistance. Thank you, Commander Harrow. You won't regret this. We look forward to building a future with your people as allies. With the Alliance tentatively in place, preparations began for sharing intelligence and planning joint operations. Harrow knew the road ahead would be fraught with challenges, but the potential for positive outcomes was too significant to ignore. The crew of the Sentinel, now involved in an interstellar political intrigue, worked diligently to uphold their part of the Alliance, all the while keeping a wary eye on the broader Voren political landscape, aware that the situation could shift rapidly. With the new alliance forged between the Sentinel's crew and the Voren rebels, strategic plans for a joint operation began to unfold. Commander John Harrow convened with both his senior officers and representatives from the rebel faction, including Soren, to outline the battle for liberation of the Voren people from their oppressive regime. 
The planning took place in the strategy room aboard the Sentinel, where holographic maps of Vorin territories and fleet positions were displayed. Harrow and Soren leaned over the console, discussing the positions of the Vorin government forces. Our main target will be their command center on Vorin Prime. A precise strike there could cripple their operations without extensive collateral damage, Soren explained, pointing at the glowing dots that represented the heavily fortified government stronghold. Harrow nodded, understanding the stakes. We'll need to coordinate our fleet movements tightly. Carter, have we integrated the rebel ships into our battle net? Lieutenant Carter, who had been configuring the tactical systems, responded affirmatively. Yes, Commander. Our systems are now synced. We can communicate and operate as one unit. Good. We'll use the cover of the asteroid field near Sector 12 as our staging area. It should give us enough concealment to organize our strike force without detection, Harrow strategized, his eyes tracing the route on the map. The days leading up to the operation were tense. Harrow made sure that each ship, both Sentinel and Rebel vessels, was prepared for any eventuality. The crews trained together, running simulations and drills to ensure cohesion in the upcoming battle. Finally, the day of the operation arrived. The Allied fleet positioned itself behind the asteroids as planned. Harrow communicated to every ship, his voice resolute through the comms. Today, we fight not only to assist our allies in their quest for freedom, but to demonstrate our commitment to justice and peace. Stay sharp, follow the plan, and watch out for each other. As the fleet moved out from behind the asteroids, the Voren government's defense forces were taken by surprise. The battle commenced with intense exchanges of fire. The Sentinels' advanced weaponry coupled with the guerrilla tactics of the Voren rebels proved effective. Government ships began to falter under the coordinated assault. During the fray, Harrow kept a close eye on the progress towards the main objective. Carter, status update on the approach to the command center? We're on course, Commander. Resistance is stiffening, but we're pushing through, Carter reported, his focus fixed on the tactical display. Soren, aboard his own vessel but linked via the battle net, added, Our ground forces are ready to move in as soon as we've secured the airspace. The command center will be in our control soon. As the battle progressed, the tide turned in favor of Harrow and the rebels. With precise strikes and strategic maneuvers, they managed to disable the command center's defenses, allowing rebel ground forces to secure the facility. With the command center under control and most of the Voren government forces in disarray or retreating, the battle neared its end. Harrow, seeing the success of their efforts, allowed himself a brief moment of relief. Soren, congratulations. It looks like your people are on the path to freedom. Thank you, Commander Harrow. We couldn't have done this without your help. This is a victory for all of us, Soren responded, gratitude evident in his voice. The aftermath of the battle involved securing the area and ensuring that the new rebel government could establish itself. Harrow and his crew assisted where they could, providing security and technical support to help stabilize the newly freed Voren territories. As the Sentinel and its allied fleet patrolled the Voren system, ensuring no further threats emerged, Harrow reflected on the operation. It had been a risky endeavor, but it had paid off, not just in military success, but in forging a strong alliance based on mutual respect and shared ideals. The battle had been fierce and taxing, but the collaborative forces of the Sentinel and the Voren rebels had emerged victorious. With the Voren government's command center now under rebel control, the initial chaos gave way to a more structured effort to establish a new order. Commander John Harrow worked closely with Soren and the new rebel leaders to ensure the transition of power was as smooth as possible. In the aftermath of their victory, Harrow convened a meeting with his senior officers and key rebel leaders aboard the Sentinel to discuss the next steps. The conference room was filled with a palpable sense of accomplishment but underscored by the gravity of their responsibilities ahead. We've achieved a great victory, but our work is far from over, Harrow began, addressing the room. We need to assist in stabilizing the newly liberated zones and ensure that the transition to a new government is peaceful and organized. Soren, who had been instrumental in the rebel victory, nodded in agreement. Our people are grateful for your help, Commander Harrow. We are committed to building a government that values freedom and justice, 
but the path will be challenging. Carter, who had been monitoring the situation across the Voren system, added, We've detected minimal resistance from remaining government loyalists. It seems the majority are willing to accept the new leadership or are too disorganized to mount any significant opposition. That's good to hear, Harrow responded. We'll continue to provide logistical support where needed. However, it's crucial that the Voren people see this as your victory, Soren. Our presence should not overshadow the efforts of the rebels. As the discussions continued, Plans were made to deploy peacekeeping units to the most volatile areas and to provide humanitarian aid where it was needed most. The Sentinel's medical and engineering teams prepared to assist in restoring critical infrastructure that had been damaged during the battle. In the days that followed, Harrow frequently communicated with Earth Command, updating them on the situation and the progress being made. The reports were met with approval and relief as the stability of the Voren system was crucial to regional security. Commander, Earth Command has just sent a commendation for your actions here. There's talk of commendations for the crew as well, Lieutenant Reynolds informed Harrow during one of their briefings. That's generous of command. Make sure the crew gets the recognition they deserve. They've performed admirably under extreme conditions, Harrow said, proud of his team's resilience and professionalism. Meanwhile, Soren worked tirelessly to consolidate his position and begin the process of democratic reforms. Public broadcasts were made, in which he frequently credited the collaboration with the Sentinel and its crew as pivotal to their success. We owe a great debt to Commander Harrow and his crew, Soren said in one such broadcast. Their support in our time of need was crucial, and it stands as a testament to the power of unity and cooperation. Gradually, the Voren system began to show signs of recovery and normalization. Markets reopened, curfews were lifted, and schools resumed. The relief among the populace was palpable, and the new government's popularity soared. Back on the Sentinel, Harrow allowed himself a moment to reflect on their journey and the outcomes of their involvement. He knew that they had ventured into a complex situation, one fraught with potential pitfalls but seeing the tangible results of their intervention reinforced the value of their mission. Looks like we're finally seeing some stability here, Commander, Carter commented one evening as they reviewed the day's reports. Yes, it's been a hard-fought victory, Carter. Let's hope the peace lasts. The Voren people deserve a chance to rebuild and prosper, Harrow replied, looking out at the stars, hopeful for the future. The success of the mission not only strengthened the strategic position of Earth in the region, but also demonstrated the effectiveness of supporting just causes beyond their immediate territory. As the newly established Voren government began to stabilize and show signs of robust governance, Commander John Harrow and the crew of the Sentinel prepared for their return to Earth. The mission had been long and fraught with unforeseen challenges, but the outcome was undeniably successful. It was time to bring their report and the wealth of acquired knowledge back home. Before departure, Harrow convened a final meeting with his senior staff to review their mission logs and ensure all data from the Voren system was secure and ready for analysis by Earth Space Command. Make sure all our findings are backed up. I want a comprehensive report on everything from the fleet's tech to the diplomatic negotiations, Harrow instructed Lieutenant Carter, who had been diligently compiling the mission details. Carter nodded, tapping on his data pad. Everything's ready to go, Commander. We've got detailed logs and full scans of the Lost Fleet ships, plus recordings of all communications with the Voren rebels. Good work, Carter. Once we're back, Earth Command will want a full debriefing. We'll need to be prepared to discuss potential future engagements and support for the Voren system, Harrow said, thinking ahead to the strategic implications of their successful mission. The crew busied themselves with the preparations for departure. The engineering team conducted final checks on the Sentinel's engines and navigation systems, ensuring that the ship was in peak condition for the journey back to Earth. In the midst of their preparations, Harrow received a communication from Soren, now officially recognized as the leader of the Voren people. Commander Harrow, I just wanted to express our gratitude once more. Your faith in our cause has been instrumental in our success. It was an honor to assist, Soren. 
We're glad to see peace taking root in your system. Keep in touch and don't hesitate to reach out if you need further support. Harrow responded, pleased to see the genuine progress being made. With everything in place, the Sentinel finally embarked on its journey home. The return trip was less tense than the outbound voyage, with a sense of accomplishment permeating the ship. Crew members, who had spent months away from their families and the comforts of Earth, looked forward to reunions and some well-deserved rest. During the voyage, Harrow spent time in his office, looking over the stars streaking past the viewport. He reflected on the mission's achievements and its broader impacts. Their engagement had not only changed the political landscape of the Voran system, but it also provided Earth with a valuable ally and insights into lost human technologies. Commander, we're approaching Earth's orbit, Carter announced over the comms, interrupting Harrow's thoughts. Thank you, Lieutenant. Inform Earth Command we're ready to dock and debrief, Harrow replied, standing up and straightening his uniform. As Earth grew larger in the ship's front view screen, a sense of pride filled him. They were returning not just as explorers, but as diplomats who had forged a path toward peace. The Sentinel docked smoothly at Earth's space station, where military and political leaders awaited their return. Harrow led his crew out of the ship, each member greeted with applause and expressions of gratitude from the gathered officials. Commander Harrow, welcome back. We've been following your progress closely. Your report will be invaluable in shaping our future space strategy, one of the high-ranking officers said, shaking his hand. Thank you, sir. I look forward to sharing our findings and working together to ensure the security and prosperity of both Earth and our new allies, Harrow responded, confident in the positive outcomes that awaited following their debrief. As the crew dispersed to reunite with their families and enjoy some rest, Harrow remained focused on the future, already considering how the experiences and alliances formed might shape humanity's destiny among the stars. The mission had ended, but its impacts would resonate far into the future.